In support of its external security function, the NVA have pursued an increasingly assertive role since the mid-1950s, promoting both East German and Soviet interests in the Third World. Having gained the Soviet's trust and having asserted the role of the Soviet Union's leading surrogate in Africa, Asia, and Latin America, as well as the Middle East. By 1986, the NVA had come to play a large part in Moscow's Third World strategy. In Africa, where East Germany had been active since 1950 or the late 1950s, early efforts were modest, motivated partly by a desire for international recognition and a quest for stable supplies of raw material and raw labor and raw resources. The German diplomatic isolation imposed by West Germany's Hallstein Doctrine, which precluded diplomatic relations with both Germanys between West Germany and any state that had such relation with East Germany, had ended in 1972, and the coming Dayton altered East Germany's international standing. In 1973, the East German regime renewed interest in military aid to Africa, and the same year, East German military advisors were sent to Brazzaville, Congo, or the Socialist Democratic Republic of the Congo, not to be confused with Zaire. <coughs> as the involvement of the GDR continued to diversify and increase in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Other motivations became much more preeminent and much more clear. New intentions included a desire to demonstrate the permanence and the prestige of the East German Republic, a demonstration and a determination to compete in the international arena with West Germany, which East Germany depicted as the sole heir to German imperialism and colonialism, and, and an eagerness to prove its value as a frontrunner for the Soviet Union in endorsing liberation movements and acting on the Leninist tenet that Moscow's road to Europe led through Africa. In providing assistance to military, security, scientific, technical, and economic spheres, East Germany's goal, both national and international, remain constant with those of the Soviet Union and the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Estimates of the numbers of East German military advisors in Africa varied widely, as the reports on their location, their whereabouts, and what branch of service. So, estimates of the number of East German military advisors in Africa varied widely, as did reports of their location and even their rank and even what branch of service they came from. According to the West German Foreign Office, in the mid-1980s, East German military advisors in Africa and members of the NVA, the National Volksarmee, as well as the Ministry for State Security, or the STASI, they numbered between 2,000 and 4,000 the majority of them being in Ethiopia, Angola, and Mozambique. Their influence reached far deeper than the numbers may suggest, since the East Germans concentrated on establishing internal security or secret police, uh, intelligence services, training cadres and guerrilla commanders, and organizing national military systems. In 1982, East Germany acknowledged that it delivered arms and military technology and educated cadres, established plants for defensive industries, granted patents for productions of defensive materiel, and helped to organize and train troops in East Germany, as well as their home countries. According to some sources, East Germany was training all categories of African officers except staff officers, who received their training in the Soviet Union. Angola paratroopers, for example, reportedly practiced in East German paratrooper battalions in joint exercises in the Higan Island in the Baltic Sea. In the 1980s, East Germany's primary clients in Africa were Ethiopia, Angola, and Mozambique. Others receiving East German aid and military aid included Algeria, Cape Verde or Cabo Verde, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Nigeria, Tanzania, Tunisia, Zaire, and Zambia, as well as the Southwest African People's Organization, or SWAPO, and the African National Congress, or South Africa proper, Mandela's party. East German military expenses in Africa generally averaged about 60 million US dollars in the 1980s. This reflects the underdeveloped state of the Republic's armament industry as well as the competition within the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance, or COMCOM. But the low figures may also result in the diversionary tactics of smuggling arms and shipments through a third country, Czechoslovakia being the most likely conduit. Some assistance was not labeled as military either, but as scientific technical and had clear potential for military application, for example, port expansion and modernization, construction of hospitals, training of physicians, and deployment and the development of transportation and telecommunication systems. Many of the current countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, as well as the People's Democratic Republic of Yemen or South Yemen, had East German training, civilians, secret police, border troops, and even prison guards in their territory. The elite Fliliks Grazinski Guard Regiment of the Ministry of State Security trained security personnel in Angola, Mozambique, Ethiopia, and South Yemen, for example.
In addition to training, East Germany also provided solidarity aid to a number of African states and even to Vietnam during the Vietnam War and Reconstruction. During the mid-1980s, disaster relief was provided to Ethiopia during the severe famine of the Ethiopian Spring. East German civilians and military assistants participated with the Soviets in delivering such items as foodstuff, blankets, clothing, tents, vitamins, and even medicine. Shipments of solidarity goods were coordinated with other Eastern European states because of ComCom's agreement of a defensive labor or the Appendix B. Or the, it was a staple clause in the treaty for ComCom. In the mid-1980s, an aspect of East German involvement in the Third World, the Republic's increasing identification with world federalism posed a significant danger to the West and to the United States and their allies in the Middle East. East Germany allegedly trained terrorist camps in Libya and South Yemen, and the NVA even operated a school for terrorists in Pranko, a northern part of East Berlin. The school had ties with the Palestinian terrorist organization and perhaps the Soviet Committee of State Security as well. A response to charges and changes in the political scene, East Germany became more active outside of Africa as well. In the 1980s, East Germany gave support to the Palestinian Liberation Organization, or the PLO, South Yemen, Iraq, Vietnam, India, Nicaragua, El Salvador, Afghanistan, and other countries and other movements in less developed countries. For example, it flew wounded Afghanistan soldiers to East Berlin and supplied medical and even other equipment to the Afghan army while El Salvador and Nicaragua received various forms of military assistance. Since the mid-1970s, East Germany has been involved in directly or indirectly virtually all large-scale conflicts in Africa. In many cases, the Angolan Civil War, the Angolan War for Independence, the Ethiopian and the Ogaden War and the Eritrean War, and Mozambique with Freely More and with Freedom Fighters. And for some instances, East German support was actually crucial to winning major battles, like Cueto Carnaval. Despite the financial expense and the support of Africa and other third world countries, East Germany in the mid-1980s was strengthening its existing ties and seeking new ones as part of a policy expressively and even based on Marxist-Leninist doctrine and proletarian internationalism. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. Wash your hands, wash your ass. Um, it's been a good run. I will still record and still make great videos for you guys and I hope to see you when the internet comes back. Worst case scenario, it doesn't, but worst case scenario, it does. Love ya. No homo, nigga. Learn something.